God bless you all again in the name of Jesus. You know, when I was finishing the other video, I just said that um, that I was going to make another video uh, concerning the Feast of Shabbat. Heavenly Father, I pray at this hour in the name of Jesus. I saturate this hour in the blood of Jesus. Father Lord, we come before you. I pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that, Father, you bless us and teach us how to love you with all our hearts, with all our strength, with all our minds, and also to obey you to celebrate the feast of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God's people, um, I know that we had a lot of issues with some things we saw in the Bible um, because of some misunderstanding. I need us to understand that just as the Lord Jesus said, God did not abolish his laws. Jesus celebrated all the feasts of the Lord. And he asked the disciples to to carry his message, say that, you know, to go into all the world with the gospel, to teach them, to say we should baptize and heal the sick, raise the dead, and baptize them, teaching them all things that I have taught you. There is no difference between the gospel that the Jewish people observe and the gospel given to us. The Jewish people, we are the light. We are the Lord's priests. We are the light to carry the message to all the nations of the world. The Bible they read was Moses and the prophets, plus all those Psalms, you know, David and all those things. The Lord Jesus fulfilled all the feasts, fulfilled all these things. We are supposed to observe the feast of the Lord. What we call Ten Commandments was not Ten Commandments, actually. It was a set of laws. God's laws started from Exodus chapter 20. So from that, when he reached the tent and the people made noise and said that they were not, and then Moses came, the same Moses should just have, then God continued from there. The law continued. Exodus 22, Exodus 21, Exodus 23, 24, it continued until Moses broke the tablet and God asked him to come back for another set of tablets. That another set of tablets was given in Exodus 34 as the Ten Commandments. It's called testimony, the tablets of testimony. And in that tablet, God also asks us to keep all his feasts because every feast of the Lord you know, was prophetic. The Lord gave, when the house of Israel left, uh, left Egypt, they started counting of Omer, and after the celebration of Passover, then, and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Lord asked them to count seven weeks, I think, yeah, it was counting of Omer, and then there was 49 days, and then the 50th day was in the giving of the Torah. The Lord asked them to prepare and he gave them Torah. Torah was like just as the manna fell from heaven. That was how the Lord allowed his word to come unto the people. And so what I mean by manna falling from heaven is, yeah, it fell from heaven. He gave the Torah to the people. The Torah is called the teachings of God. The Hebrew meaning of Torah is, um, I think I said something about it the other day. Torah. Behold the prince that sealed the covenant. 
you know, Torah. If you look at the letters of the Torah, the letters of the Torah is Behold the Prince that sealed the covenant. Let me just Torah Tav Resh. You know, Tav Resh and Yay. Those are the Hebrew words that mark the Torah. So Torah and then we have Resh and we have um we have um hey the man looking up God's commandments are not abolished. Jesus said that heaven and earth will pass away, but not even a jot, not a stroke of God's law will pass away because Torah is the teachings of God. That's why Jesus said that we, if anybody, if anybody, you know, breaks any of God's law, if anybody breaks any of God's law, oh, okay, okay, Tavresh and, um, Hey, I forgot how to. Okay, I'm coming. This one is. Let me just use the head of man, and this one is. Uh, um, this is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It's called Tav. The sign of it is a cross. Jesus said, "I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega." So, the Tav. Tav is, is, this is the sign of a Tav. What does this mean? A sealing of a covenant. So Rish is the head of man. It's like a prince. It's a prince or head of a nation, a president, a leader. So Torah. And then, um, hey, <laughs> I've forgotten the letter of hey. You know, let, let, just, um, let me see. Hey. Um, Hebrew letter hey trying to I don't know how just hey just disappear from my head hey okay hey that is um Hey is um, a picture of a man. It's like somebody looking up like this. Somebody that raises his hand like this. He says, hey, behold. You know, it's, it also talks about revelation of the Holy Spirit. So Torah means, you know, from, you know, Hebrew language is counted from left to right. So hey, um, Hey is behold, is is looking at revelation. You are trying to get a revelation from God. Looking up. It connects you to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of secrets. We are going to see that the Holy Spirit is the one that Jesus said he will guide us to all truth. Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. What is truth? Truth is the word of God. What is truth? Truth is the commandments of God, the teachings of God. Truth. Who is truth? Jesus. Who is truth? God's teaching. Jesus is God's teaching. Jesus is the word of God. He is the teachings of God. Um, that's why Jesus said that God did not abolish God, the commandments. God did not abolish his laws. God did not abolish the prophets. I have taken time. The Lord has taken me, you know, my ministry transitioned into these, um, restoration of all things and the Lord started teaching me things and then God's law started from the garden of Eden and he also gave his law he gave them to Adam and then after the killing uh, after the they transgressed against God against the law of God God made a substitute that is the animal sacrifice and then the law of God continued to Enoch had God's law I have recently I have read the book of Enoch I've taken time to read. Then I realized that Enoch was a harbinger of Christ and his kingdom. So Enoch had the commandments of God. Enoch 
saw the tablets of testimony in heaven. He saw the commandments of God, the sent divine sentences, divine commandments. And then he saw them in heaven and he wrote them down. And he taught it to his generation. Enoch taught God's law to his generation. Enoch abode on God's law. And then he taught the same law to Methuselah. Methuselah continued what Enoch started, and then they pass it down to Noah. Noah. Noah, how did Noah find grace with God? The only way we can find, Jesus did not just come the other day. Jesus has been there. Everything is about centered in Christ and his kingdom. So whoever carries the law of God is carrying the kingdom of God, is carrying Christ. So Enoch I have taken time to study the teachings of God based then Enoch was prophesying all his prophecies, all his teachings were pointing to Christ. All the teachings of Noah, Enoch was pointing to Christ. Then the word of God said that Abraham, Abraham walked in my statutes. God said, you can Google it. Abraham walked in my statutes, in my commandments, in my ordinances. Abraham walked with God. Abraham was raised in Noah's family. Abraham did not just follow from heaven, follow from nowhere and started following God. Abraham was, if you read the book of Joshua or anywhere, you will see that Abraham was sent to the house of Noah and Shem. Shem was Noah after Noah. Noah was a priest of God. Remember Noah made sacrifice after he came from the ark. When he came out from the ark, he made sacrifices. Noah had the commandments of God, the teachings of God from Enoch. Enoch raised Noah. Noah now walked with God and found grace with God. And Noah imparted the teachings of God to Shem. Shem, I think Shem was the king of Meshizedek. Was that Meshizedek, whom Abraham paid tithe. So the paying of that tithe was, was in, a line, in line with God's commandments. So God's teachings continued. So Abraham was raised in the household of Noah and Shem. And then Jacob was raised in the household of Noah and Shem too. So Jacob, remember he paid tithes too. He paid tithe. He said, God, I will give you tithe of all if you will. So Jacob walked with God. God did not say, Paul said that God said, uh, Jacob, I um, Esau, I hate and Jacob, I love. That's not what God said. God said that he hated, that is, after they grew up and have become nations, the Esau generation began to rebel against God. And God said that he hated them and that's the Moab and destroyed their habitation. I don't even think Moab is still around now. So God gives us a choice. Jacob made a choice. Esau made a choice. Esau married the Canaanite woman. Esau was disobedient, rebellious. Yes. You will read it clearly in a book of Jasha. So uh, even in the Bible, Esau married Canaanite woman, the woman that God said, these people had the commandments of God and they obeyed and walked. Abraham walked in God's charges. And Jesus said to the Jews, if you are Abraham's descendants, then do the works of Abraham. That's what Jesus told them. What, did they, what is the work of Abraham? Abraham kept God's laws, charges, ordinances. We are given to him. So these laws, ordinances, when the children of Israel came out of Israel, God now gave them the law for the nation of Israel. It's been there. The law has been there. He gave them the law in the, to the nation of Israel. These are my laws and ordinances. Follow them. They are they are the teacher. That's what Jesus said. If you have believed Moses, you would have believed me because Moses wrote of me. So Jesus came to fulfill what I mean is to bring the laws to fullness. That's why, and I think it was in Isaiah chapter 42, where he said, I will, he will magnify the law and make it honorable. That's what Jesus did. He said, you've heard that it was said, you shall not commit fornication. But I tell you, if you look at a woman to lust after her in heart, you have committed fornication already. Jesus was not adding to the law. He was bringing them to fullness. He was bringing them to fullness. Jesus now put his teachings, you know, put his teachings and brought it, made it complete. He had issues with people. We need to, people, people need to understand this. Jesus 
did not was not against keeping us Sabbath. He was not against the things we taught. What Jesus was actually fighting against was the tradition of men. He said, by your tradition, you have made void the commandments of God. The, the Philistines, the, 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 the Pharisees, the Sadducees, name all of them, they were making, they were adding and subtracting to God's law. They were making um, traditions out of God's law. You know, um, God did not say, for instance, God did not say if, if it is my Sabbath, you should not, like the disciples of Jesus were plucking grains of corn and eating because they were hungry. They were not walking. God forbid walking on Sabbath. God forbids cooking on Sabbath. The disciples of Jesus were not breaking God's commandment for Sabbath. They were hungry and plucking grains and eating. That's it. It was not against God's law. So these people came and said, why are your disciples breaking the laws? You see, you see, always see that he's talking about tradition of the elders. That, like they say, why did your disciples eat with unwashed hand, breaking the tradition of the elders? And meanwhile, I want to say something there. Jesus did not say that it is not what enters the man's mouth that I have seen the writing that, you know, defiles him, that it's what comes out. Because I have been wondering about that scripture. What Jesus actually said that things that Unclean things that enter man will defile him. You know, and also what comes out of man, the evil thoughts are those defile him. But eating with clean wash hand or not clean wash hand does not defile any man. Jesus said that they are that they wash out they they, 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 they garnish the tombs of the prophets or false prophets, they garnish them. But inside that tomb are dead men's bones. They wash the outside of the cup and they leave the inside of the cup in, 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 in a dirty. They, they observe, observe things, observe things, observe traditions, observe this, observe that. But they left the true word of God. They left the commandments of God. So what I'm trying to say here is, I'm trying to explain to us that God did not abolish his laws. It was Paul that says so. And the same Paul that said, if you read my Facebook um, pin something, you will see where Paul is now saying that he is following the way and he is keeping the laws of Moses and prophet. You will see him saying it there. He's also saying that Christ is the end of the law. We do not keep law. He, on the other hand, he will say that we are keeping the law. Well, forget about that. I have been talking about that. So, God did not abolish the Now, let us go back. This is the feast of the giving of Torah. The Lord, on the 50th day after they left Israel, when they left Egypt, I celebrated the Passover, so the Passover which marks the deliverance from the bondage. Deliverance, it is prophetic because it's also it marks the deliverance from sin. So it's prophetic. So, and the feast of unleavened bread. So they, and Jesus died on the, remember Jesus died on the Passover night. So they, um, they celebrated, then the Lord said that they should count seven weeks, counting of Omar. And because all these things also, um, point to some of the farm, I mean the, the harvest, because each of these feasts, things happen they will bring their sons and present to God they will also bring the first fruit of the farm whatever there was a spring harvest, I think this is the spring harvest um, spring harvest, bring it to God bring it to God, the first fruit so, and also bring your children to God. These are the things. Say, present your children. Shall present yourself to me three times in a year. Three times. So, in, in all these presentations, they will bring their sons, the firstborn, because every firstborn belongs to God naturally. Every firstborn belongs, every firstborn son is God's. And then bring them, present them to me. And also, do not bring your sons to me empty handed. Don't bring them empty handed. So, those are the things that God commanded. So, we, we thank God today because of the feast of um, the giving of the word of God. If the commandments of God were not given to us, if the word of God was not given to us, what do we have? We have nothing. How can we serve God? The word of God is sweet. The commandments of God, they are 6.13. And um, then there is um, 
Ten Commandments that are in Exodus 34. That's where you see the true Ten Commandments, Exodus 34. They made a lot of things in the Bible that is not, I mean, they did a lot of adding and subtracting. That's why Jesus Jesus had to warn the hypocrites, um, the Pharisees, and they said, the scribes were the handlers of the law. They were adding and subtracting. The real commandment, Ten Commandments, is Exodus 34. Read it. You see it in Exodus 34. So the Lord asks us to keep his feast. And one of these feasts is Shavuot. We must bring our sons to him. And we are, so in, in keeping this feast, in keeping the feast of the Lord, they said that one of the ways to keep this feast now is to study um, Torah all night as a way to appreciate the giving of the word of God. The Torah, as I say, is the teachings of God. Uh, it's so sweet. The word of God is sweet. It gives you wisdom. It teaches you, you know, teaches you how to order your life. They do not go up and down as a third bear among your people. Do not be a grudge against your neighbor. He gave commandments concerning animals. He gave commandments concerning um, birds. He gave commandments concerning neighbors. He gave commandments concerning civil matters. It, that is that is the order of the kingdom of God. The order, the order of the kingdom of God. Now, um, one more thing. Um, so, when Jesus was raised from the dead. On the fiftieth day, he gave the Holy Spirit was poured. So the feast of the feast of the giving of the Torah is also the feast of Pentecost. So the Holy Spirit is the spirit of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of Pentecost. Uh, is the spirit of truth. Jesus said he will guide us unto all truth. The Holy Spirit is the um, the spirit of truth. So the Holy Spirit is te teaching us the teachings of God, guiding us onto all truth. God God will judge us based on the word of, the, of His commandments. Jesus we, Jesus teach, Jesus taught us faith and also work. He said to the the ruler, the young ruler. If you will enter life, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. If you will enter life, keep the commandments. So, we are to study the word of God. The commandment will give us understanding. It will give us insight into what God wants us to do. It will give us wisdom. We are also thanking God for giving us the Holy Spirit. Because the, feast of the, 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 the giving of the Holy Spirit... The giving of the Holy Spirit on the uh, day of the Pentecost was fulfilling God's plan that he will pour in, the, in, in, in God's um, prophecy, the prophecy in Joel, that in the latter days he will pour his spirit upon all flesh. Your young men shall dream dreams, your, young, you know, your children shall see visions and all that stuff. It's the pouring of the spirit to all flesh. We thank God for the gift of the Holy Spirit. So I want us to, um, I'm encouraging us to celebrate the uh, the feast of the Lord, to enjoy the presence of God, to you know acknowledge that God gave us in His Torah, and to thank Him for that. The Hebrews or the Jews, before they uh, they read the Torah, the Torah, you know, God sent them to the land that flows with milk and honey. Remember, there is something about this Torah. Um, God sent them to the land. God gave them Torah, and sent them into the land that feel, that flows with milk and honey. As long as they continue with God's commandment, they will stay in that land. If they break God's commandment, the land will vomit them. You see? So, the Torah, the Torah is like the milk and honey. The Torah is our milk and honey. It's our milk and honey. So, you know, um, I will encourage us to study. The internet is, you know, here to check the Feast of Torah. And the feast, this feast is called Shavuot, to see how it is being celebrated and go through this order. Because God asks us to celebrate his feast and to present our sons before him and to also bring our harvest, the first fruit offering. Even if we cannot do all these things, let us just acknowledge 
and thank God for the gift of his word. The Hebrews, before they studied the word in the synagogues, they will all mark much round, touch it, and, you know, touch it and with, because it's like honey to their lips. Your word. David always said that your word, your testimony, you know, he said a lot about the testimony of God, the word of God, is honey, is, is sweeter than honey. Yes, it's sweeter than honey. Precious Father, we thank you at this hour as we enter the feast of Shavuot, this feast of giving of, we thank you for giving us your word. We thank you for giving us Jesus Christ. We thank you for, oh God, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. We thank you, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the word of God. We thank you, oh God, for pouring your word. And, oh God, you said in the word of God in Isaiah chapter 2, Two verse two, that in the latter days that you will exalt your mountain above all mountains, above all the hills, and the inhabitants of the earth shall flow to the mountain of the Lord's house, to the house of God of Jacob. And they will say, Let us go. This nation, this city will say, Let us go to the house of God and house of God. And he will teach us his ways that we will walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. Out of Zion shall go forth the law. Torah is, Behold the priest that sealed the covenant. Behold the prince, that's Jesus, that sealed the covenant. So the Torah points to Christ. The Torah is telling us about Christ. Behold the prince that, point, that sealed the covenant. Or behold the prince that was nailed to the cross. That's why, that's why um, the sign of Tav is the cross. The sign of Tav is the cross. The prince that sealed the covenant. Behold, behold the prince that sealed the covenant. Behold. The prince, the head, that sealed the covenant. So you cannot remove Christ from the teachings of God, from Torah. Let us return. That's what our fathers used. People that walked with the teachings of God, Noah and Enoch, Elijah, they all walked in the teachings of God and they even went to heaven. You know, from here. They were transformed right here. They walked with God so much until they transformed. Moses stayed on the mountain to bring the teachings of God. We thank God for giving us his teachings and we thank God for the Holy Spirit. The God said in the letters that he will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, not like the one he made in Mount Sinai, which covenant they broke because it was on tablets. Now, he wants to make it and write the word of God in our heart. So the word of God is written in our heart. How? Through the Holy Spirit. That's why the Spirit of God leads us into all truth. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you and keep you. Please let us keep the lost um, ordinances and walk with him in Jesus' name. For that, strengthen us. And as we keep as we keep your laws, as we keep, observe your feast, that he will bless us indeed. This is also the season of blessing. Anytime the Lord, anytime we are observing the feast of God, it's also a season of blessing. It's a circle of blessing that we will receive the blessing. That is, uh, that is attached to every covenant of God, that attached to every testimony, uh, every feast we keep, that whenever we obey God, God, that's a, a, a blessing that's attached to it. Thank you, Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name.